two short questions from the um, One one at a time. Uh, this is not press uh, okay. government press conference. <laughs> yes. I guess um, because um, regarding reopening the border to yeah. the um, international tourists, yeah. what's um, the ideal timetable? Um, when should we reopen? And um, do you support programs um, running for re-election? How do you comment for Shh. performance? <laughs> well, first, for, oh, reopening the first, border first. Reopening the border. I think. Personally, I think that uh, reopening the internet, the border to international, is very, very important because we are an international uh, city. We built a reputation of being an international city. We're a financial center, uh, banking center, you know, and so. Uh, with the border closed before 21 day quarantine and now 14 day, you know, it, it's very difficult to refer international companies to run a business to, you know, to be able to, you need to bring executives out, be able to work and then go back and if they're in quarantine, you know, it, it just doesn't work. And we can see it's been a problem and then we've lost a lot of expatriate uh, uh, people who were gone back home or emigrated or gone to Singapore or somewhere else. So I know it's difficult because as, as the government wanted, open the border with China first and then uh, look at the international side. The big problem is because Omicron is really, really a very serious disease that spreads very, very quickly. and. If Omicron gets into China in a big way, it's always already in China, but not so big yet. Hopefully not, because if it gets in with 1.4 billion people, it'll be a real problem for the world, not just for China, but for everyone, for the world. So it's important that they keep the border closed until we get the numbers down for Omicron. One of the suggestions that I, I might have is that is that if the border really remains close and, and Omicron, and once we get the numbers down, um, then potentially we can do what Beijing did in the bubble, you know, whereby the athletes came out from wherever, from all over the world, right? But they were in a travel bubble, uh, you know, and, and didn't really go into the city of Beijing. What we can do is keep Hong Kong as a bubble with the international world. The border's closed, right? But if people need to go into China, they have to 21 day quarantine or 28 days, whatever China is, you know. Uh, but at least Hong Kong can slowly get back to life uh, with, with the border because I don't know how long it's going to be, China's going to be closed. And I understand why they're closed the border because of Omicron, you know. And, and so, you know, I'm trying to balance between both sides, and that's just a suggestion. I haven't even mentioned it yet, but I just think that's something I was thinking because it worked in the Olympics very, very, very well. And so it might be something that could work for Hong Kong uh, and really save a lot of jobs and save a lot of businesses here. What about Carrie Lam, another term? Well, I mean, it's up to her. I mean, I have no idea who's going to run. You know, we should know hopefully in a month, you know. <laughs> April, you know, April 3rd is when the nominations start. And, and uh, we'll see, you know, May 8th is, is, is the election date. Uh, we'll see if she wants to run. Then it's up to the election committee to decide if they want her to run again, you know, if they want to vote for her. But, uh, you know, she's come through a very difficult period. and. I, I just don't, I really, honestly, I don't know. Any other questions? Yes, TVP. No, no, Economic Journal. Economic Journal, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, last week you sent a letter to Lam and saying that Hong Kong needs clear messages. Yeah. Has Lam replied to you yesterday? What did she say? She, she yes, I said to earlier, she, she did reply to me the next morning, you know, which was a very nice reply, and I really respect her because uh, she took all my points basically and, and, and really, um, uh, you know, kind of answered that she will look into them uh, and, and, uh, and really hopefully, you know, um, do whatever she can, you know, whatever she can to, uh, you know, to, to make it work. And so she did answer and, and she took note of it, you know, which, which, you know, listen, I've been with Carrie for, you know, 20 years basically you know, I, I'm on her economic advisory committee so I know Carrie well and and uh, and she knows I don't mean any bad things for her or for Hong Kong and uh, everybody knows you know where my heart always is and and so that's basically you know we have 
a, a good relationship like that where, where she knows whatever I say, I'm usually trying to help. And that's basically, you know, and that's basically it I respect. Listen, it's a very difficult job. You know, being the chief executive is not easy, especially in Hong Kong, you know, because you've got China on one side, you've got the Hong Kong people on the other side, you know, and you're kind of in the middle. And, and you're trying to balance on both sides. And, and, and China gives us the autonomy to do things, but it's, you know, it's, sometimes it's difficult because the systems are different in some cases. And so, and, and we're just going through uh, a new, you know, it's, it's only 25 years since uh, 1997. We're like a young new country with one country, two systems with China. So it's gonna take time. Listen, one country, two systems with Deng Xiaoping's idea, but, Again, no, there's no template for it, basically, and so we're living, the, we're living it now. And some mistakes are made, and some we will correct them. It's it's for everyone. It's never been done before anywhere in the world. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Let, let let this gentleman. Uh, can you, Alan? Can you just tell us a little bit about Lai Fong and what effect? Confidence had on Lang Kui Fong. How do you see it recovering? <laughs> you know how to hurt a guy. <laughs> um, basically, of course, Lang Kui Fong, not just Lang Kui Fong, but most retail in Hong Kong is very, very quiet. You know, people are staying home. Uh, they, you know, many bars, clubs uh, have been closed since July, since January. Basically, uh, you know, gyms, same. You know, so. Uh, obviously, people and, and restaurants uh, now with the new regulations, it's only two people can go in the, and restaurant uh, hours are from 5 a.m. to uh, 6 p.m. You know, so for lunch business, I think I had lunch there today. You know, there's three tables. <laughs> I mean, it's it's you know, it, it's heartbreaking, but there's nothing you can do. You know, you, you see be, huh? well, I'm hoping that. Uh, we can get the virus under control, and and then the uh, government will allow you know slowly, like we did in in, in the last two years with uh, when the viruses the Alpha and Delta uh, were hit. Hopefully, they'll be back. Uh, you know, probably start off with certain restrictions and then work your way up as as uh, you know as long as the virus stays uh, dormant. And so and so. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe end of April, you know, right now, originally the government said April 20th, you know, uh, there'll be another review and even the air, the airlines, uh, you know, the nine uh, countries that uh, can't fly to Hong Kong right now, uh, it's up to April 20th because I think in the model that Hong Kong U had, uh, they showed that, you know, by end of April, uh, probably uh, we would, you know, uh, it would be uh, the infection rate would be very, very minimal, and so I'm hoping that that they're right, and and uh, and then we can we can get back to back to work. The good thing is everywhere we can see everywhere in the world, wherever after the virus kind of finishes, um, business is everyone. There's pent up, pent up demand everywhere in the world. Business is great, you know, because people just need to go out. They need, it happened in Australia, happened in the U.S. Happened in the UK, Germany, everywhere. And so Hong Kong, I don't believe will be any difference. And also Paul Chan now has given, you know, the $10,000 voucher to people, 5,000 and 5,000. So that also, you'll have money, to, people will have money to spend when things open up. And I think, I think hopefully we can quickly forget, uh, uh, you know, the, this, the, 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 the nightmare that we're experiencing at the moment. Any other questions? Voice of America. Uh, have you heard that there are uh, many uh, foreign uh, workers uh, leaving Hong Kong recently, recently because they worry about uh, the mass uh, testing. If they tested uh, yeah. positive, they may send to the uh, isolation camp. Correct. So, uh, are you? Do you think uh, the government should allow uh, like uh, home quarantine for some of the well, uh, positive cases? Correct. I mean, first of all, mass testing is now kind of almost off the table, so, so we'd have to worry about that. But I understand a lot of uh, parents and a lot of expats are leaving because they don't see, they can't, the borders closed, they can't 
go if they go if they go to visit some haven't seen their kids in two years three years you know or their parents or grandparents whatever and so uh, and if they come back that they had before 21 day quarantine now 14 day you know it's it's not easy with a family and, and, and all that so many have left temporarily and many have left for good um, I think that uh, basically for me um, I've been through this before the government has said that uh, because there's no room if they did do mass testing, those people that live in a house that uh, really you don't infect other people around you, uh, you can have self-isolation. They, they've already said that very clearly because there's no choice. Um, and, and so, uh, but you know, people sometimes, not sometimes, normally, the normal thing is to panic, especially <laughs> if you're not involved with the government or close to the government, that kind of thing. You know, your your neighbor tells you something and you think, oh, it's real, and, and then it gets around. It's like a viral thing on the internet. You, know? you have another question, yeah. yeah. Uh, have any of your friends from the commercial sector uh, left Hong Kong temporarily due to the COVID restrictions and how near are they? Um, well, some, yes, some I know have left their, their children and their wives have, have left. Uh, uh, even I have some family members that, that have done that. Um, you know, and it's, but it's just temporary because uh, uh, some people, I could understand, when you have kids, and the kids, and you're living in a small flat, and you might be five people, six people, and the kids can't go out, they can't, they're not going to school, they're doing online learning, and so for the sake of the kids, after a week or two weeks or a month, with the kids, the kids are going crazy, you know, because they can't really go out to their friends and whatever. So I understand many people uh, decided that just for the sake of the kids, we're going to go somewhere, Phuket, uh, <laughs> Bangkok, uh, <laughs> Singapore, you know, whatever. And, and uh, you know, but it's normal. But they're coming back. You know, they're just waiting for uh, the things to to really, I don't want to say die down, <laughs> not, not good words, but, but just waiting for things to really minimize and then be back.